most boys, well, sometimes I get the call and it just comes out of my soul. But I also have this editor named Alvina Ling at Little Brown who sometimes will drop an idea in my head. So she thought maybe I should write about uh, young men of color uh, being assaulted because of racism or racial bias. And I immediately said, no, no way. She brought it up because she had heard some of the incidents that happened in my family with me raising a black son. But by putting that note inside my soul, it grew and grew and grew and I kept thinking about it. And then finally one day I said, ghosts. I can write it if I can add ghosts. And it was only years later that Alvina told me she was really worried that I had thought about ghosts. But all of a sudden Emmett Till, as well as you know the contemporary murders of young black men, came together as a whole. And it makes sense because when I was a child, that was when Emmett Till was murdered. And I remember seeing pictures of his casket. I remember the grown-ups talking about it in ways that maybe a contemporary parent might not talk about it right now to a young child. So my life had been bracketed by Emmett Till, then later the murder, well, no, the assault of Rodney King in the LA riots when Evan was two. And then as he grew older and became a teenager, the world became even more harsh and more set against him. And I started experiencing the worry of Evan, be safe. Evan, be careful of police. Evan, you know, come home. So I thought it was very sad that given the course of my life, that there were still these issues that needed to be dealt with. Um, but they've changed. And now I think there's that much more subtle sense of bias where people look at children of color and see them as bigger, more mature than they are. They see them as more problematic than they are. They're just, they're just kids, you know? And that bias is still rooted in that early sin of slavery, still rooted in the racism that caused Emmett Till to be murdered. But it's that bias that we still must tear out. And when I am with fifth graders and sixth graders and seventh graders, I feel as though I'm with the generation that's going to change everything. I see their love, I see their empathy, their compassion for one another, and I hope my book reminds them, don't judge on externals. Remember what you were like when you were in fifth graders. So by the time they become voting citizens, by the time that they move into the world as adults, they are maybe going to help us eradicate that sensibility that just because you're a person of color, someone feels they need to call the police on you.